Hello and welcome to this episode of Risk Matters Talks. I'm Marian Patasis and today we will be talking about the two main types of artificial intelligence in the banking sector. AI is playing an increasingly important role in bank strategy and operations. And so it's important to explain some basic concepts. Let's start with a simple overview of the two main forms of AI and the main differences between them. Let's start with generative AI and then talk about agentic AI. These are terms that are thrown around quite a bit. So what are they? Before we dive in, let me also share with you that we are currently exploring various ways of leveraging these technologies for the benefit of our clients, and we will be making some announcements in the coming days. Now, having worked for several years with an IBM company and having great respect for Big Blue, I went to an article that they issued on the differences between these two forms of AI and wanted to use this article as a basis for our discussion. Now, let's start with generative AI, which is the most well-known of the two. According to the IBM definition, and I quote, generative AI is artificial intelligence that can create original content, such as text, images, video, audio, or software code, in response to a user's prompt or request. Gen AI relies on using machine learning models called deep learning models, which are algorithms that simulate the learning and decision-making processes of the human brain, and other technologies like robotic process automation, RPA. In simple terms, Gen AI acts like a newborn baby going through the process of growing and learning in a very similar fashion, and depending on the specific use, content design code, it is educated in the specific field. The models work by identifying and encoding the patterns and relationships with huge amounts of data, and then using that information to understand users' natural language requests or questions. The models can then generate high-quality text images and, on con and other content based on data that they were trained on in real time. So that's the definition from IBM. So if you go to ChatGPT, DeepSeek, Gemini, and you ask it a question, it will use the processes that we just talked about in order to answer your query. Now, what are some of the trends in generative AI? The first is Gen AI augmented applications. This is when augmented applications are integrated into various software and platforms to make requests more personalized. The second is synthetic data for model training. This is the use of synthetic data, i.e. artificially generated data that mimics real world data, but is not actually derived from actual events or observations. And this is used to train models when real data is not available or is very expensive. The third is deepfake technology, which I'm sure you're well aware of, uh, given that deepfakes are circling, uh, uh, circulating all over the internet. Beyond the entertainment factor of these uh, and the shock factor, there are of course major ethical concerns given how realistic some of these images are and how potentially they can cause damage to people. I'm sure you're uh, familiar with a fake female model who supposedly attended various events at Wimbledon uh, this past year, and her pictures went viral, and she amassed hundreds of thousands of followers in no time. This was for a person who doesn't even exist. Therefore, watch this uh, area for, uh, for developments, because it's something that is causing a great amount of concern. The fourth area is content personalization, and this is especially true in the retail space, in order to tailor information to individual preferences. So that's in terms of the general trends. Now let's move over to the second area, which is agentic AI which is something more advanced and pr uh, probably more relevant to the corporate world and may be less well known than Gen AI. Let's go back to the IBM definition and quote, Agentic AI describes AI systems that are designed to autonomously make decisions and act with the ability to pursue complex goals with limited supervision. It brings together the flexible characteristics of large language models, LLMs, with the accuracy of traditional programming. This type of AI acts autom autonomously to achieve a goal by using technology like, lang like natural language processing, NLPs, machine learning, reinforcement learning, and knowledge rep representation. It's a proactive AI-powered approach, whereas Gen AI is reactive to the user's input. Agentic AI can adapt to different or changing situations and has, quote, agency to make decisions based on context. It is used in various applications that can benefit from independent operation, such as robotics, complex analysis, and virtual ass assistance. That's the IBM definition. So you can see again that we're talking about something which is an agent, which can actually make certain decisions autonomously. So that puts AI into a whole new light. 
In financial services, agentic AI will affect strategies such as executing trades, for example. Given the extended reach of agentic AI, it is a significant benefit as agentic AI can be designed to search the web extensively and come up with data and numbers and make decisions based on that. Agents are able to retrieve updates and obtain real-time information. On robotics, agentic AI can handle complex tasks and operate independently to perform specific tasks. And according to IBM, firms like Amazon are widely using these processes. So you can see from this definition that AI is taken to a different level when, quote, agents can now make decisions instead of just providing information. We have heard of companies developing lots of these types of agents to make these decisions across industry and work alongside humans. Once this is widely done, and is done across different corporations and different sectors, it will have large-scale implications on strategy operations and hiring of major corporations, including banks, where key characteristics of a manager or somebody being hired in a senior position will be how well he or she can manage these digital workforces. It will also affect what younger people study in the future, as many technical professions will be easily replaced. Perhaps it will make human skills and knowledge of classics even more important, as soft skills are much harder for technology to replicate than hard skills. But we can get in more into this in a subsequent episode because it's a very, very important issue. As we close this brief segment, there's lots to think about. If you find this content useful, please like and subscribe. Mm -hmm.